every once in a while, you're going to sit back and want to design your own 3D printing project. And you're going to want it to have threaded parts. It might be a nut, might be a bolt. It might be just a threaded shaft, like on this spool winder here. What I'm going to do today is show you how to use Fusion 360 and design and print your own threads. I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to start drawing the nut. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select sketch. Then I'm going to pick a plane to sketch on. I'll select this one right here. And I will start by drawing a polygon. So we'll come up to create, go to polygon, and we're going to select circumscribe polygon. And that will give us a polygon on the circumference of the circle rather than on the inside of a circle. I'm going to start here in the center point of my sketch plane and I'm just going to click and drag outward. Next, I'm going to make it so my lines are straight up and down. So I'm going to use a vertical constraint. I'm going to click on these lines that are semi-vertical and now we're straight up and down. The next thing I want to do is get some dimensions and I'm going to find those by going to Google and type in images for fastener metric fasteners so we're going to add a dimension across the flats of 21 millimeters and that's it that's all we need we'll finish the sketch and we'll go to extrude I'm going to extrude that up at 12 millimeters and we'll click on OK and there we have the building blocks of drawing our fastener the next thing I want to do is if you ever looked at a fastener you'll see there's a chamfer and it kind of rounds off these corners right in this area here so I want to add that next so I'm going to come in and I'm going to do another sketch right on the top surface I'm going to select circle and I'm going to go to the center click and drag outward now I want this circle to be touching the lines, the outer edges of our nut. So I'm going to use a tangent constraint. I'll click on that. I'm going to click on my circle and then I'm going to click on any one of those lines. So let's go ahead and finish this sketch and now we're going to do another extrude. We're going to come up and click extrude. We're going to click the circle and what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to new body and we're going to select intersect. I'll select that. I'm going to put a taper angle of 45 on, on there. And for my distance, my arrow is pointing up. I need this to go down. So I'm just going to put negative 12. Now I could have easily gone with negative 6, negative 5 anything that would have got us below that point. You can see what's going to happen here. It's going to round it off just like we're expecting. So let's click OK on that. And there we have it. It's really starting to take shape. But what we need to do is put the same intersection on the other side. I don't feel like drawing again because, well, I'm lazy. So let's come up and we're going to hit Construct. And we're going to pick mid plane to add a mid plane. What we're going to do is click on our top surface and now we're going to flip it over and click on the bottom as you can see it added a plane right there in the middle for us. And get a better view of that You see what's going on. Okay so now let's come up to create once again and we're going to come down to mirror. We're going to change bodies to faces. And we're going to go ahead and click these faces. And then I'm, from, I'm going to hit mirror plane. I'm going to click on that mid plane we just put there. And 
there you have it it's starting to really take shape now now we are done with this mid plane you can't just delete it if it's bothering you you can turn it off I'll show you how uh, if you don't care about it leave it there I personally don't like it I don't like clutter on my screen that I don't need so I'll come over here to construction and where the little eyeball symbol is click on that close the eye so now I'm going to show you two different ways to do the fastener part the threads the first one and both of them are equally easy one's not any better than the other it's your choice but starting with method one I'm going to come up here and create a hole click on hole and then you see how my whole face lit up here I'm going to click that surface now you'll see this blue dot click and drag that around and you'll see this white dot right in the center you get close to that and it's going to snap right to it now we are draw, uh, doing a 12 millimeter screw thread so I'm going to change my diameter there to 12 um, I want my distance to go through everything I want to add a cap countersink to this one I don't need to it's just a, a lot of people do it if you actually look at a fastener it actually has it on there um, for my hole type I'm gonna hit tapped I'll leave that at 90 my point I can change that to flat now you'll notice down here it already changed it to by just picking 12 millimeters it already gave us the thread designation of 12 by 175 if we go back and look at our thread chart you'll see that's what we want to draw a 12 by 175 that's pretty cool we don't have to do any thinking there it's automatically going to be a right hand thread the key to this is making sure that you hit this checkbox that says modeled otherwise you will not get printable threads and when you have all that click on OK and there you have it printable modeled threads now I showed you told you I was going to show you two ways so I'm going to get rid of that and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch I'm going to click on that I'm going to draw a 12 millimeter hole we'll finish that up I'm going to extrude that I'm going to extrude it all the way through I hit two objects you could have easily hit all if you want um, I don't need a taper it's going to be a cut that's all there is to it well to get in the hole there the next thing we want to do is come up to uh, you know what before I do that I'm going to add a chamfer I'm going to put one on the bottom and I'm going to just make it 0.4 millimeters one on the top one on the bottom actually and we'll go with 0.4 I don't need much that's about a nozzle width now what I'm going to do is come over to create I'm going to come down and I'm going to click on thread and just click on the cylinder wall it already tells me it's a 12 millimeter um, M12 by 175 it did all that again but like I said before you must click this box to get printable threads and there we have it that's all there is to it I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'm just going to call it nut now it wouldn't be right to have a nut without a bolt so I'm gonna kinda of cheat on the bolt what I'm going to do is come in and delete my thread I'm going to delete my chamfer uh, I'm going to delete the hole and I'm going to get rid of the mid plane I don't need that anymore and there we go so if we were looking at this that's the way we would see our bolt the first thing I'm going to do is come back and I'm going to hit sketch 
I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. Just like we did in the early stages of drawing the nut. I'm going to make that tangent to the outside. And I'm going to finish. I'm going to extrude that up mm, one layer height. 0.2 millimeters. You don't have to do that. It's just getting extra fancy. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to save it because right now we're just changing the nut file. I don't want to do that. I'm going to come down and do a save as. And I'm just going to call it bolt. There we go. Alright. So now I'm going to do, draw another circle. So I'm going to come to sketch. I'm going to click on my bottom bottommost surface. I'm going to do a circle. And we know it's a 12 millimeter thread we want, so I'm going to just type in thread. I'm going to finish that off. And I'm going to extrude this up, say, 25 millimeters. For people who are used to working in English, that's going to give us close to an inch. Now from here, we just come up, we hit create. We're going to hit thread, just like with the nut. We're going to click on the surface here. And it already determined that it's an M12 by 175. But you want to make sure that it's modeled. It's right hand thread. We'll click OK. Now, a lot of people would stop there and they would print, and that's where they're going to run into problems. Now, I typically only do this next step on external threads. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to zoom in as close as I can and we see the threads. I'm going to click on this surface here. I'm going to hold my control key down. Click on the midpoint, the, the mid face there, and the bottom. So those three surfaces. And what I'm going to do is right click. And I'm going to hit press pull. Now right away I notice my arrow pointing outward. I want that to go inward, so I'm going to use a negative value here. Most times, I'll use a negative value of 0.25. But as you can see, that is not going to work in this case. Now, let's try negative 2.2. There, that's going to work for us. It's still a little less than I, you know, not as much as I would like to see of the original face. I'd like to see something like that, but I'm not sure one five is going to work for me. So I'm going to go with point two. If I really wanted the point one five, I would probably go with the negative point one five on the external thread, go back to the nut, the nut, and have that expand or press use a press pull of point one five. Just you can split them up between the two. I usually only do the external. I typically don't print threads this small in diameter. But I know this is going to work. So let's just click OK. And right now we have a printable bolt. If you don't like the thickness of that head, that does look kind of ridiculous. Um, I don't have the dimension off the top of my head of what it should be. But let's change the extrusion from, say, 12 millimeters. Let's go to 9. See how that looks for us. That looks a little more realistic. And I'm only picking that one at uh, the 9 millimeters at random. I'm not sure what it is. So, there we have it. I'm going to save this. I'm going to export it as an STL. So, we'll come over here to export. We'll leave it at bolt version 1. And we'll export as an STL. And I'm going to go ahead and export that out as an STL as well. And we'll get them loaded in Cura. So they printed out pretty good. And as you can see, they actually thread pretty good too. I'm pretty pleased with the way these came out. 
hopefully you can apply this to your own projects. Now, I know this was a little bit long in the video, but trust me, it only takes a few minutes to draw these up. It's the time it takes to explain and show where every, every command is. As you use Fusion 360 more often, you're going to get used to it. And the more you draw threaded parts, the better you're going to get at that too. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. I'd really like to hear about it and how you plan to use them on your own projects. Hit that like button. Smash the bell. Be your own hero. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.